What's up everybody, you're very welcome along to this summer's first bite-sized agenda and as you can see from the thumbnail, what I'm going to be talking about mainly today is of course Jamal Lewis. I'm sure you guys have heard that Liverpool have put in a bit of around 8 million to 10 million plus a few add-ons for Norwich's left back. Now Norwich were relegated as you guys know and that means that a couple of their players are up for grabs but Liverpool's bid seems to have been instantly rejected with Norwich looking for somewhere in and around 20 million for the young left back. Uh, Northern Irish international, I don't believe that he's worth 20 million myself and I think that Liverpool can probably strike a deal somewhere in the middle, maybe 12 million with add-ons. I don't think 20 is realistic, even in this climate, for Norwich to be looking for that much money. Uh, the good thing that I've read up actually on Jamal Lewis is that Liverpool look at him as somebody who can not only play at left back, but in the future could perhaps even step in and cover at centre-back if needs be, which is not something that I would have ever thought of. Now, Liverpool aren't just looking at one left-back. Obviously, in these situations, you've got to have a plan A, a plan B and a plan C. And one of the things that I've read is that we're looking at the uh, left-back from Olympiakos. I think it's Samikas or something like that, but you know me at this point. My pronunciation is terrible. And we are looking at him, I think, as a backup option in case Jamal Lewis doesn't come through. Now, when I hear these things come out in the media and are played out in the media, I think of one or two things. It's either Liverpool saying to Norwich, you know, we do have other options, so if you don't sell us Jamal Lewis, it's okay, we'll move on and we'll get somebody else for a reasonable fee. So I think it could be a little bit of a negotiating tactic, but I do remember about us uh, being interested in this left-back before the Jamal Lewis stuff came up. I wouldn't write off Lloyd Kelly as well just yet, by the way. Uh, Bournemouth player, we looked at him, I think when he was at Bristol before he went to Bournemouth, uh, a lot of people actually thought he was going to sign for Liverpool, but he did go on and play for Bournemouth again. Somebody you can cover at full-back and at centre-back. Uh, what other transfer news have I got for you guys? Mendy, or Mondi is probably how it's supposed to be pronounced. The centre-back from Real Batiste. We were thought to be interested in him. We still may be, I'm not sure. A fee of around 10 million would probably get the, uh, I think he's a 28-year-old Algerian international out of Real Batiste. He's in the last year of his contract. Uh, it seems that Fenerbahce have declared their interest as well in the centre-back and West Ham have also been noted of being interested in the player. So one to keep an eye on again there. We do need centre-back cover, there's no doubt about that. Dejan Lovren obviously moving to Zenit St. Petersburg has given us a space in centre-back uh, option or the road or whatever you want to call it. Fourth choice is where the, whoever comes in is going to be because I know that this is a, a bone of contention between me and some of you guys out there. But to me, Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez are the first choice uh, centre-back pairing with um, Joel Matip coming in as third choice. And then whoever comes in will be fourth choice unless we're all shocked and we go out there and get some absolute worldly centre-back. Diego Carlos was another player who was linked with us. They're going to demand something like 50 million. His buyout clause, I think, is 75 million euro. No way Liverpool are going to pay that in this current climate, so I wouldn't be expecting that one to happen. Uh, three Liverpool players shortlisted, by the way, for the Player of the Season nomination, which is great. Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, of course, Jordan El Capitan Henderson, who won the uh, Riders Player of the Year as well. And Sadio Mane has also been nominated on that shortlist. It seems like, realistically, it'll be between De Bruyne and Jordan Henderson for that award. But it is great to have three Liverpool players in the shortlist for the award. Three Liverpool players, by the way, who have had magnificent seasons. If I was to have cast my vote on this, I probably would have cast it for Sadio Mane, if I'm being honest. But um, if Jordan Henderson wins it, if Trent Alexander-Arnold win it, I'll be over the moon. But you know what? If Kevin De Bruyne wins it as well, I will say fair play because nobody can deny that he's had an excellent season. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's too much else for me to talk about with regards to transfers, but I'm going to circle back around to Jamal Lewis again because um, this bid that we put in that has been rejected at least lets us know one thing. We are going to be active in the market and we are going to be looking for some bargains this summer. People don't like when we say the word bargains, but let me just cast your mind back to Andy Robertson and Kevin Stewart, that deal. And another interesting sidetrack to the Jamal Lewis situation is, we all know that LaRucci is going to move on from Liverpool. Well, he could be used as a bit of a makeway in the deal to uh, bring Jamal Lewis to Liverpool because Norwich will need a, an up-and-coming young left-back. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but Craig, he's going to be walking off on a free. Yes, but like any other young player who was educated at a football club, we would be due compensation for the player. So that could be used by way of a bit of a negotiation to get him 
uh, from Liverpool to Norwich and Jamal Lewis going the other way. So definitely one to keep an eye on. If there's any more transfer news comes up, I will, of course, let you guys know. My gut feeling is that we're going to wait and see how the market plays out and that maybe later on in the window we'll, we'll start looking at other options. Maybe if we move on somebody like Shakiri, maybe if we move on Grujic, uh, Harry Wilson, a couple of other fringe players, then that might free up more money for Jurgen Klopp to go out and do some business. But I think we're just going to be clever in the market, see if there are bargains to be had. Again, I know I'm using that word bargains that people don't like, but by bargains, what I mean is Liverpool exploiting the fact that some clubs are in a bigger financial mess than other clubs. The likes of Leon, as an example out there. If we, let's say, for example, we wanted Hussamoir, we could probably wait until later on in the window. Nobody else puts in a bid for him. Leon are under a bit of financial uh, pressure. The player wants to go and play European football. Then maybe we could go in there and, and get him for a reasonable fee. I don't know. Uh, other stuff that's been floating around, we've been linked with Ismail Assar, of course, of Watford. Um, somebody who I think makes absolute sense. I can see where we're linked with him and why we're linked with him. He's a good friend, an international teammate, obviously, of Sadio Mane. Actually, he looks up to Sadio almost like a big brother. So definitely keep an eye on that situation. It's been reported widely that Liverpool are tracking this kid. He only moved to Watford from France. I think it was from Ron, if my memory is correct, for around 30 million the previous summer. So hasn't been there that long, but with them going down, they're probably going to have to start getting rid of some of their bigger and better players as well. So keep an eye on that situation. Wolves have obviously been looking at him as a possible replacement if somebody was to come in and take a damn at Traore as well. But as things stand, um, I would say that he is the most likely for us to go in and add to our attacking options. And I think it would be a good piece of business because, yes, he's still raw and, yes, he hasn't hit the heights yet. But that's exactly the type of signing that Liverpool go for, isn't it? So we'll wait and see what happens on that one. But, look, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed the video. Uh, we'll be doing more of these regularly, maybe a couple of times a week throughout the summer as well. We'll be doing our late night agendas, as always, around half past eight each night. So I hope to see you there as well. Don't forget to give our uh, social media accounts a follow as well, at Anfield Agenda on Instagram and Twitter. And just give us a look us up on Facebook as well and give us a like on there. Thank you very much and I'll be back soon. Up the Reds.